So 3D printing has always been something that has intrigued me, but I was skeptical about the difficulty of it all. That was until I saw Rillo's video on the bamboo lab printers, and after that, I was sold. The fact that you could create basically anything out of thin air blew my mind. And instead of ordering something online to solve a problem and waiting a few days for it to arrive, you can generally create that solution yourself with 3D printing. So that got me thinking, what problems could I solve with 3D printing? And ironically, a few weeks later, Bamboo Lab actually reached out to me to try out their A1 combo, which includes their A1 printer and their AMS Lite. And the AMS Lite allows you to print multicolored prints and is a very useful addition to their 3D printers. Now, Bamboo Lab did not pay me to make this video, but they did send over their A1 combo for free, along with some coupons to be able to purchase some filaments and some other accessories to create the video. So definitely take that for what you will. I just wanted to disclose that right out of the gate. And I also know that Bamboo Lab has come under fire recently for a few things and I actually found that out after the printer was sent to me and I wanted to disclose this up front as well because I know a lot of people after watching this video might want to get into 3d printing and look at bamboo lab so this information could change your mind or it could not and I'll link below a better explanation in the description but in summary there's a lot of fear that bamboo lab is moving towards a closed ecosystem potentially violating user privacy and limiting compatibility with third-party software and third-party filaments there were definitely some mis steps taken by Bamboo Lab and a ton of pushback from the community, rightfully so, but nothing has officially gone down that road yet. You can still use third-party filaments and third-party software, but that's as of today, not tomorrow or next year. It's still something to keep in mind potentially for future concern. Again, I just wanted to disclose that. I'm not here to sell you on Bamboo Lab printers. I was just fortunate enough to get this printer as my first printer. And even though they sent this over to me, this is more just about 3D printing and a beginner's experience with 3D printing. But since this was the only 3D printer and software that I used, I'm gonna have to talk about that from that experience and talk about the software and this printer specifically. Does that make sense? Okay, now that that's out of the way, let's get started with the rest of the video. So setting up the printer was actually really easy and the instructions were straightforward to follow. It didn't take me long to get it set up. As soon as I did, I started a test print of the little boat that comes built into the A1 and most of their printers. You mainly wanna use a test print to make sure everything's working correctly. And after about 20 minutes or so, the first print was done. Now for the filament that I ordered for my printers and filament is essentially just the material used to create the prints. And they come in a spool form factor. For the most part, I decided to go with PL PLA and specifically PLA matte from Bamboo Lab. And PLA is just your standard generic filament and can pretty much print anything you want. And there's many other types of filaments out there like PETG, but it was recommended to me to start with PLA and then sort of work my way up from there. But PETG is also a good beginner filament as well. And with PLA and most filaments, there's a bunch of different types of colors and finishes. And with PLA specifically, they have PLA matte, PLA sparkle, and PLA marble, and actually a bunch of different other options that you can choose from. And using different types of filaments can create different types of cool looking 3D prints and other companies offer a bunch of different types of filament as well. So the market is pretty wide open in terms of filament choices. Now, besides the boat test print, there were a few things I wanted to print after doing some research on 3D printers and specifically the Bamboo Lab A1. The first thing was a poop bucket for the A1. And if you don't know what poop is, really filament poop, it's essentially the excess waste that a 3D printer purges when switching colors or just purging old filament. And let me tell you, the A1 has a ton of poop. So this poop bucket was a must. The next thing was a scraper to remove prints and excess filament from the print plate. The A1 comes with a sort of razor blade tool meant for scraping, but cool enough, built inside the printer itself, there's an option to print a scraper kit. And you also get some screws with the printer that help you build this scraper kit. I also printed a nozzle storage case to store all the nozzles for the printer. And to organize my build plates, I found a plate storage model on Maker World. And all of these prints keep my workspace super clean and organized and help me avoid losing accessories for the printer. But I still haven't found a solid place for this 3D printer yet. Right now it's in my game room, but sometimes I actually have it in my office closet. Still looking for a place to actually make it its final home. And I mentioned Maker World, which is Bamboo Lab's online database of thousands of free 3D models. And pretty much anything you can think of is on Maker World. But there are also many other free databases where you can find other 3D models 
for free. This is the best resource for people like me who don't have any experience in 3D modeling. You can search for a problem and find a 3D print solution created by someone else. Now, if you want to create your own 3D models, there's resources and applications like Blender, Tinkercad, and other softwares out there, which I'll make sure to link in the description. But if you're like me and have no experience creating 3D models from scratch, I can confidently say that what you need is most likely out there already, unless it's something super specific, in which case you'll have to make it yourself. But in the process, you'll learn a great skill. So it's a win-win. Now, like me as a beginner, I was wondering, how do I take something from Maker World and actually print it? Well, luckily, Bamboo Lab software was pretty straightforward. All I had to do was download a model from Maker World, click on it, and it automatically opened up in Bamboo Studio. Now, there's a lot to digest in Bamboo Studio with many different settings to customize your model. However, most settings such as supports, infill density, and infill patterns are already configured. And the only things you really need to change if it's not already selected for you is your printer that you're using, your print plate, your nozzle diameter, and filament selection. And whenever I was ready to print, all I had to do was ensure my printer plate nozzle and filament were selected click slice plate to prepare the print and something really cool to see as a beginner is it gives you an estimated filament usage and print time so you'll know exactly how much filament you're going to need to use and how long that print is going to take and then whenever i was ready to start my print all you have to do is click print plate and the a1 has a camera built in so you can monitor your prints on your phone or your computer but i will say the camera quality is pretty janky and it stutters a lot at least over Wi-Fi. You can also film time lapses with that camera as well, which is definitely a cool feature, but I mainly use it just to quickly check and make sure my prints are okay if I'm away from the printer. Now their mobile app is called Bamboo Handy and it's actually pretty useful. Just like on your computer, if you're away from your printer, you can just monitor your prints right from your phone and you can also stop and start prints and even find models on Maker World to send directly to your printer. So after I learned pretty much everything I needed to know about this printer and got started with my first prints, I wanted wanted to start solving some problems around my studio and just print some really cool stuff. And specifically for camera gear and camera gear storage, I found a bunch of cool 3D prints for some problems that I was having. One specifically for Sony batteries, I wanted to print sort of like a carrying case so that I can keep all of my Sony batteries in order whenever it's in my camera bag and they won't go flying around whenever I'm having to go on a shoot or traveling with it. So this is a really cool and handy print that I printed that keeps them all tidy and in the same place. It has storage up for four batteries, but I'm sure there's another model out there where you can probably print one with six storage, eight storage, maybe even 10. But this is a super cool print and one of the first prints that I actually made for my camera gear. Then for storage on my pegboard, I found this Sony battery dispenser that I can just attach right to the pegboard and have quick access to batteries when I'm here in the studio. Also found these lens covers on Maker World for my Sony E-mount lenses and I wanted to add some text to it. So I went on Tinkercad and sort of customized the lens cap for each of my specific lenses by adding text to that model. It took a few trial and error attempts, but finally I got it to work and I think it actually turned out pretty great. Another cool thing that I wanted to try is that I've seen these people use these disposable lenses for their Sony cameras or Canon cameras, and I wanted to see if I could print one for myself. So I found this model on Maker World that came with a bunch of different pieces, and all I had to order was a disposable lens camera and a set of these screws. But another joy of 3D printing is trial and error. And sadly, for some reason, this model that was online is just a little bit too close to the sensor, so everything's out of focus. I noticed that if I hang it off of the sensor just a little bit, it's in focus, but it actually didn't end up working out. On the flip side, there's other models out there on Maker World, and I found this other version of the portable disposable lens that wasn't as robust and quality made as this model but after a few diy changes i was able to fit the lens in here and it actually worked out pretty good I actually reached out to the creator of this model to see if he was having the same issue. And if there's an update, I'll make sure to link that in the description if you wanna print one of these for yourself. I definitely say this is the best model to print, but I just wish it worked for me. Another cool print was that on my desk setup, my audio interface is actually Velcroed under my desk and it always keeps falling. So I found this 3D model specifically for my audio interface that will allow me to screw it underneath my desk and now it should never fall off. Then I also printed this hard drive caddy for my S. 
SSDs to store on the back of my PC, and that just keeps them from dangling around and keeps them more organized. But listen, there's a ton of different models out there, especially on Maker World, and I could print and talk about these for days on end. And the really cool benefit of having the AMS light is for multicolored prints. And I saw in Rillo's video that he made this Monstera plant coaster, and I really wanted to try that out because my wife loves plants and I wanted to make that for her. I think it really turned out great, but one thing I wish I would have done was gotten a different colored light green for the plant because I feel like the light green and the dark green didn't really go together but my wife loves it and that's all that matters. Now, one thing that I've learned as a beginner 3D printer, and it's probably to be expected, is that 3D printing is not immediate. Depending on the complexity and size of your print, a print can take anywhere from one to 10 hours sometimes more than that. And I learned also that nozzle size affects speed as well. Smaller nozzles like the two millimeter have a higher detail, but take a lot longer, while larger nozzles like the eight millimeter print really fast, but with far less detail. I find for me personally that four millimeter is the perfect happy medium between quality and speed. After using the Bamboo Lab A1 combo for the last month or so, and having zero experience whatsoever in 3D printing, other than just watching videos online recently, I would say that this has probably been the easiest hobby to pick up, for me at least. Everything is super straightforward and Bamboo Lab makes it really easy to get started in 3D printing. But they're not the only manufacturer out there that makes 3D printers. There's a ton of other companies and brands out there that make really solid 3D printers. And I'll make sure to link those below if you're interested in getting into 3D printing so you can make the best decision for yourself and your purchase. I'm just only able to speak on Bamboo Lab because that's the only printer that I've ever had experience using. And for me personally, the experience was pretty solid. And I'm probably going to have that thing running pretty much every single day, all day. Also, I'll make sure to link all of the models that I mentioned below in the description so you can try and print those for yourself. Thank you guys so much for watching this video and I'll see you on the next one.